What is up everybody? Today we're going to talk about the really weird form of the F1 score, which is a metric in data science which tries to combine together precision and recall. Now, when I first learned about this and was just shown the formula for F1 score, it looked so weird and it didn't seem like the intuitive way to combine these two metrics if I was just coming from a very naive place about how would I combine these two numbers together. And so what I wanted to talk about today is how we actually get to that form and why that form has certain properties that we want. Because otherwise it seems like a formula someone just handed to us that seems unnecessarily complicated. And whenever something doesn't really make sense at first glance, we should unpack why it looks the way it does. And the way we'll start with that actually is, let's say somebody just came up to you and said, I need some kind of metric that combines precision and recall together. What would we come up with? I probably would not come up with F1 score right off the bat. I would say something very simple, like just take the arithmetic average of precision and recall. Take one half of the sum of precision and recall. This thing has the nice property that it's still bounded between zero and one, just like the individual components, precision and recall. And let's take a look at what happens as we vary the recall in this formula, setting the precision to some constant number 0.9. So we're gonna say precision equals 0.9, so we plug that into the formula, and now it's a formula of just one variable recall. And we're doing this just to get a sense of how the score thing changes that we're gonna temporarily call F1 score. How does that thing change as we take on different values of recall? Well, if I plug in recall equals zero, then we get zero plus 0.9 divided by two, which is 0.45. And so we get up here on the y-axis of the F1 score candidate. Now this already seems kind of weird because assume someone said I'm doing a machine learning problem and I have a precision of 0.9 and I have a recall of zero. Well, this certainly doesn't seem great. And any metric that's trying to combine precision and recall together and it's trying to in some sense care equally about each one shouldn't be giving almost half of the maximum possible score to a situation where you have a very good precision but a very, very bad recall. So something already seems weird. And now this is a linear function, so there's not too much going on. We go up to recall equals one, where you get almost a perfect one F1 score. And it's just increasing linearly between those two. And that linear increase is both the simplicity that makes this so easy to understand, but it turns out also the downfall of using this as our decision for F1 score. And that issue is basically there's this one-to-one, -one, or another word we can put here is constant, there's this constant trade-off between precision and recall. And you can see that just in the formula here. We just have P plus R. So for example, if I have a zero precision and a perfect recall, that's the same thing as having a perfect precision and a zero recall, which is the same thing as having a 0.5 for each one. This form doesn't really care about how much of the score comes from precision and recall. It just cares about these raw numbers. And another way to quantify that more mathematically is by taking the derivative of this thing we're temporarily calling F1 score with respect to both precision and recalls. These are my partial derivatives. And the partial derivative of my function here with respect to precision is just the constant one half. The same thing with recall, it's the constant one half. So in other words, the change in this function with respect to precision or recall, with respect to a small change in precision or recall is just this constant one half. It doesn't care about where on the precision or recall curve you are. It doesn't care about if your recall is currently zero, in which case a little bit of an increase is actually a really big deal. If you have a zero recall on your problem, getting even a 0.1 recall is actually a huge deal and your metric should reflect that. Versus if you have a 0.9 recall and you just increase your recall to one, well, that's good, but it's not of a big deal as going from the zero to 0.1 case. But because this is a linear function, it doesn't care about where you are, where your precision or recall are which is captured in the fact that these are just constant numbers and not functions of precision or recall themselves. And so this, while it's a good first attempt, does have a bunch of issues. So let's engineer this one step further and look at idea number two. What happens if we choose a slightly different form? Previously, we looked at a additive form of precision and recall. What if we look at a multiplicative form of precision and recall? So what if our candidate F1 score metric is going to be just precision times recall. It looks very simple. If this works, that would be very easy to interpret, very easy to understand. Let's do the same thing here. Let's take the partial derivatives of these guys with respect to precision and recall. So the partial derivative of this candidate function here, which is combining precision and recall, with respect to precision, 
is equal to the recall. And the partial derivative with respect to the recall is equal to the precision. So in some sense, these aren't constants, but the issue here is that the slope of the score, the score that we're proposing here, with respect to the precision should depend on the value of the precision you're at. And this goes back to the conversation we were just having around how the rate of increase of your success function with respect to one metric, either precision or recall, should depend, should be some function of that metric itself. And here we almost have that, but we have this kind of opposite case of what we wanted, where the slope of the function with respect to precision actually doesn't matter on precision at all, it just matters about recall. And the slope of the function with respect to recall actually doesn't take recall into effect at all, it takes into account precision. So we still don't have exactly what we want. So let's go to idea three. When we think about the different ways to combine numbers together, there's a couple different means that exist in the mathematical world. One is called the arithmetic mean, which is what like most people imply when they talk about the mean of something, and we already tried that in idea one. Another idea is called the harmonic mean. The harmonic mean of two numbers, in this case precision and recall, is equal to precision times recall divided by the sum of precision and recall. And we multiply by two out here, because that makes sure that this entire thing is again bounded between zero and one. Now some of you will be saying, well, you just kind of pulled that out of nowhere, and I'll give you that. It seems like it kind of did come out of nowhere. But to those of you, I would say that if you wanted to link this back to the two ideas we just had, you can notice something very cool, which is that the numerator of this proposed F1 score is going to be P times R, which is our idea number two. And the denominator, if you include the two here and make it a one half in the denominator, is one half of precision plus recall, which is exactly our idea number one. So this idea three, while seemingly have coming out of nowhere, is motivated by two things. It is a, it's coming from the fact that it's a different mean that exists in the mathematical world, namely the harmonic mean. But probably more importantly, it's motivated by a combination of the two ideas we tried already and had some issues with. And so let's do the same thing. Let's set the precision at 0 0.9, just like we did with idea number one. We work out some math here, and we find that the score, the tentative score that we're calling, this combination of precision and recall, is 1.8 times the recall over 0 0.9 times the recall. Now, the best way to understand this is probably just plot it on the same graph as we were plotting our idea number one. So if we put in zero into this function, we're gonna get zero which is actually solving one of the big issues with idea number one. So we're gonna get zero if we put in zero. Remember, one of the big issues with idea number one is that even if we had a 0.9 precision, having a zero recall is kind of just not good for most any problems in machine learning and we shouldn't really give it any points, let alone half of the best possible score. And so it's good that even if we're having a very good precision of 0.9, if we have a zero recall, this success metric is just punishing us completely. It's saying, you know what? No, I'm not gonna give you any score for that. You're gonna get a zero. Now to start drawing what this curve looks like, we can also draw the other extreme, one. So if we put one in here, we're gonna get 1.8 divided by 1.9, which is very close to 1.0. It's gonna be just a little bit below this point here. Now to understand what the shape of this curve looks like in between, it actually is a good idea here to take the derivatives that we've been taking for all the ideas so far. If we take the partial derivative of this function, this harmonic mean formulation with respect to recall, we're gonna get two times precision over precision plus recall squared. Now, it doesn't matter too much about the form itself. One big thing I want you to note right away is that we've solved the issue we had in idea number two, where the derivative of this function, the score that we're proposing with respect to recall should depend on recall. Here it did not, it was just precision. But here we see that precision is part of it, but also it does very clearly depend on the recall you're at in any given moment. And it has the exact behavior we would expect. Because the recall takes the place in the denominator here, if the recall gets higher and higher and higher and higher, then this denominator is getting bigger and bigger, which means this fraction over here is getting smaller and smaller. And that fraction is exactly the derivative we're talking about. And so the whole story is saying that if your recall gets higher and higher and higher, like if you're going from zero to 0.1 to 0.2, all the way up to 0.9 to a perfect recall, then the slope, while still being positive, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You're getting less and less and less rewards. If you're on the econ world, you can think of this as marginal returns. 
the more of something you're getting, the less that thing is impacting your overall happiness or success or utility metric, which is exactly what we're capturing right here. And you see a very parallel form with the precision. So you see, if you take the derivative with respect to precision, the precision is affecting it right here, and that takes the exact same symmetrical form. That also exactly helps us draw what this is looking like. It's gonna look like some kind of logarithmic-ish shaped curve. And so while you have a zero recall, you're actually getting great gains in this metric. You're getting a very steep ascent in your success metric. But as your recall gets higher and higher and higher, while the metric is getting higher and higher and higher, it's not getting higher at a nearly fast rate as it was at the very beginning. And then it eventually starts plateauing out like that, which is exactly the behavior we wanted. So we solved both of these issues. The first being that if you get a zero recall, doesn't matter what your precision is, we're gonna give you a zero score. And the other issue we had, of course, was that the linear function didn't care about where you were on the recall curve or the precision curve. Whereas this formulation definitely does take into account where you are on the recall curve. Do you have a very poor recall? In which case you should get lots of points for getting a little bit better recall. Or do you already have a great recall? In which case I'm not gonna give you that much more points for just a little bit of extra recall. And it also solves the issue with formulation number two, where we wanted the dependency to be based on the thing we're taking a partial derivative of. And therefore this harmonic mean formulation, which we can finally call the F one score is the agreed upon method for combining precision and recall. Now what I'll leave you with is that when we kind of build it from the ground up in this way, instead of starting from the top down, where I were to start this video by saying, here is the F1 score, and let me tell you some stuff about it. By engineering it, building it up in this way, we're able to ask a lot of questions like, what if I found another function that kind of has all the same properties as this one does? Why would I not use that? For example, here's a some food for thought, something to think about. And if you have any insights on this, please leave them in the comments section below. Uh, we talked about the arithmetic mean, which was idea number one. We talked about the harmonic mean. I have conveniently left out one of the three Pythagorean means in mathematics. The left one out is the geometric mean, which looks very similar to our idea number two, except there's a square root. It doesn't seem like it changes too much, but it actually changes the entire game. And one hint would be take these derivatives again, except with the square root of p times r, which is the geometric mean, and see if it now has similar properties to what the harmonic mean formulation has. And if it does, then why are we not using that? What is the advantage of using the harmonic mean formulation over the geometric mean formulation? It's definitely something to think about, which becomes more obvious to think about when we engineer formulas when we re-engineer formulas rather than just take them as gifts from God. So I hope you learned something about why the F1 score might look how it does, what properties it has if we accept that the F1 score is the one that most people accept as the F1 score, and why other formulations, while simpler, like if this arithmetic formulation had everything we wanted, then why would we go to the trouble of this much more complicated form? But hopefully looking at these uh, ideas one and two help motivate idea three. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much, and I will see you all next time.